We've had a couple of down days. We did clock in a great week last week. In fact, it was the best week since March. What are the markets trying to tell us here? You know, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that the markets really have been repricing um, security so far this year. If we look at valuations of the S&P, for example, at the beginning of the year, they're trading about 23 times forward earnings versus uh, about 16 now, which is much closer to historical averages. So I think a little bit of the air has come out of this. And, you know, with really strong underlying fundamentals in the market and the economy, I think that we'll see stocks start to climb that wall of worry again. Uh, but it's really, you know, adjusting to these headwinds that consumers are dealing with every day, like inflation and higher interest rates and what the Federal Reserve is going to do. What kind of timing are we looking at? So if people are feeling like we've been beaten down, this is a correction or a bear market or whatever you'd like to call it, um, what kind of timing are you looking at? How do you start to place some bets? Um, well, I mean, I think if you look at last week with the massive rally that you mentioned, you know, the S&P was up about 6.5% on the week. Um, it's possible that we've seen a bottom. Um, but I think, you know, timing in is really impossible. It's not, it's not time in the market. It's really about time in the market. And I think that, you know, a lot of this, these headwinds have been priced in, and now it's about any good news that's coming along. Now that's going to start to lift stocks moving forward. Um, and I do expect that we'll continue to see that. I mean, we've seen... Some of these inflationary readings start to come down. We're still seeing expansionary readings from things like purchasing managers indexes and things of that nature. Obviously, the jobs report will have something to do with that, but we're still at historical, you know, historically low unemployment. All those things are really bullish for the economy and ultimately for markets. Yeah, yeah. Why is this a good time to be bullish? Um, well, I mean, if I told you at the beginning of the year that halfway in, valuations would be at a 30% discount to what they are now, um, you know, I'd be pretty excited about that as an investor. I think it's a pretty good buying opportunity. Um, looking at small caps as well, I mean, they're trading far below their historical averages. So just looking at valuations, I mean, do we think that markets will recover as they have historically? I would say yes. Um, are valuations pretty attractive right now? I would also say yes. So I, I think that's a good reason to be bullish. So at this point now, um, you said let's use a barbell approach. How do you think we should approach this if you want to put some money to work? Uh, well, dollar cost averaging is always a good idea, especially in times of market volatility. Um, so I, I think that's a good approach week over week if anybody's sitting with some dry powder or a lot of cash on hand. Um, cash certainly isn't you know, serving you at all with inflation the way it is. You're just losing purchasing power. So if you're a little you know, hesitant about getting into the volatility, um, dollar cost averaging and just adding it in slowly over time is always a good good strategy. Yeah, and you said I saw you said cash is trash, so forget that. Are there certain sectors that you think it really um, here at these levels may be good to jump into? Um, yeah, I think small caps in particular are really offering attractive valuations. You know, again, talk about the s and p and large caps close to their historical average. Small caps are far below their historical average. Um, and any increase in revenues really impact their bottom line much more significantly than, than large caps. Um, so if we are in an economy that's going to continue to grow and accelerate, that's really going to benefit them uh, that much more. Yeah. And what else is factoring in here? I mean, as inflation is real and uh, it's you know, less transitory than originally thought, at this point you're going to have the Fed raising rates. How much does that factor in? I mean, there, that's something that Jamie Dimon talked about when he said brace yourselves um, for an economic hurricane, concerns about the Fed raising rates, concerns about the Ukraine war that's been ongoing, and lockdowns that have been on and off around the world. Yeah, those are all great points and, and real risks to be concerned about. Um, but I think if you look at what's happening in markets, financial conditions are kind of tightening on their own. You know, we're seeing bond yields rise. Um, we've seen valuations come down in stock markets. So, you know, are we looking at does the Fed have to be so hawkish where they're now going to grind the economy to a halt and maybe put us in recession? Or can they be a little bit dovish because we're seeing inflation come down a little bit of, on its own, because we're seeing, you know, higher yields and lower valuations? And I think that's exactly what we're seeing. So if the Fed can take their, their foot off the gas a little bit and come down from that hawkish stance and maybe not tighten as quickly or as severely as you know was once anticipated, that's ultimately good for markets and investors. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you one last question. Do you think the market will make new highs this year, 
next year at some point? Great question. I wish I knew the answer. Um, I think new highs are probably more likely next year than this year. Um, but, you know, it's very possible that we will at least um, erase the losses by the end of the year that we've seen so far.